In this video, we're going to look at the critical constants within the van der Waals equation of state. So last time we looked at the critical constants, we defined what they are. Um, they define the point at which a gas can be liquefied. And we noted that the critical isotherm would have an inflection point uh, where it's kind of changing from gas to liquid behavior and that we can exploit that inflection point. Uh, and we know that there's particular points where the, de the first derivative is going to be equal to zero and the second derivative is going to be equal to zero. So what I want to do in this video is since we have a state equation for pressure, we can use this fact that we know at the inflection point, these derivatives are going to be equal to zero. And what we can do is derive explicit expressions for the critical constants in terms of the van der Waals coefficients a and b. Okay, so in order to start this, we're going to have to take each derivative. So first, let's take the first derivative. Right, so we're going to need to take the first derivative of the van der Waals equation uh, pressure with respect to volume. Right, so we're going to have to take the following derivative, dp, dv. And I'm going to use v bar specifically, right? We're taking, we're using this van der Waals equation in terms of molar volume. So I'm going to say we're taking the derivative with respect to specifically molar volume. So um, in order to take this derivative, we're going to have to take the derivative of each one of these terms. So um, this is going to be pretty basic power rule. So all we have to do is just take use the power rule here on this denominator. So that's going to bring a negative out front. So we'll have negative RT and then just raise the group term in the denominator to the second power. So we're going to have V bar minus B squared in the denominator. Right now, same thing here. This one's going to put a negative two out front, but since it's a negative already there, it's going to turn into a positive. So we'll have plus two a over v bar cubed. Okay. Now, um, if we bring the uh, if we bring these terms over, right? Well, because we know that this is going to be equal to zero. Right. So that means that we can actually set these two terms equal. So we can actually write that 2a over v bar cubed should be equal to rt over v bar minus b squared, right? So we know that those terms should be equal. And specifically here, I want to say, um, I want to use the subscript c on everything because we're talking about all this stuff specifically at the critical molar volume, critical temperature, right? This inflection, this is only equal to zero specifically at the critical properties, right? So making sure that that subscript C is there. Okay, now I'm going to leave that alone for a second, right? So we've taken this first derivative and set these two terms equal. So now let's take the second derivative. Right, so we need to take the second derivative. So we're going to take this expression and just differentiated one more time, right? But basically using the same exact uh, differentiation rules that we use to take the first derivative, right? So dv bar squared, right? So taking this second derivative, um, we're going to use the same rule. So um, this two is gonna come forward, right? A negative two, so now that turns into a positive. So we're gonna have RTC over v bar c, minus b that guy cubed now right and taking this derivative again now we're going to have a negative three that's going to come out front right you're going to have to multiply that by the two so you're going to have negative six a over v bar c to the fourth right and again we know that since this is an inflection point in the graph uh the second derivative is also going to be equal to zero right so uh, what we can do here, right? We can bring these terms uh, over, right? We, we can do the exact same thing we did before and set them equal. So we can say that 6a over v bar c to the fourth is equal to RTC. Oh, and I forgot the two here, so add that two, right? Remember when this comes forward, that was a negative two that was supposed to come forward. So we have two RTC over v bar c minus b to the third power okay so we can set these two terms equal here 
right? Now, what I want to do is actually um, factor out uh, a specific term here so that we can exploit some algebra. So I'm going to go up here to this line. Um, and what I'm going to do is factor out 2 over v bar c minus b from this term on the right. And I'll show you why I'm going to do that in a second. So first, let me show factoring that guy out, right? So we have 6a over v bar to the fourth. And then we'll have RTC over V bar C minus B squared, right? I'm going to factor out that 2 over V bar minus B, right? And I'm just going to bring it over uh, to the other side. So when we bring that guy over to the other side, we end up with three, uh, yeah, three a v bar, yeah, three a v bar c minus b over v bar c to the fourth. Right, so all I did was this two came down, right? So that's gonna turn that into a three. Then this guy comes over into the numerator. This guy is gonna be equal to RTC over V bar C minus B squared. Okay, now why did I do that? Why did I factor this guy out? Well, since I've done that, we have an expression for RTC over V bar C minus B squared here, right? And one for this exact same term here. So what I can do is actually set these two expressions equal to each other, right? And then we decrease the number of variables that we have here, right? So I'm basically trying to solve this, um, this equation for V bar C, right? So if we do that, if we set these two equal to each other, so I want to set expressions equal. Right, I'm going to set these guys equal to each other. Let me use the same color here, right? So we'll have that 2a over v bar c to the third is going to be equal to RTC. Oh, whoops, nope, not RTC. That's going to be equal to 3a v bar c minus b over v bar c to the fourth, right? So um, basically this one came from the second derivative, right? This term came from the second derivative. This term came from the first derivative. But since they're both equal to this term, right, then I can set them equal to each other, right? So uh, when you crank through the algebra here, you can get an expression for v bar c, and that's going to be equal to 3b, right? So once you uh, cancel everything out, right, this guy, v bar c to the fourth moves over, you end up with just one v bar c there. Crank through the rest of the algebra, you get v bar c is equal to 3b. So now we have an expression for the critical volume in terms of the van der Waals coefficient. Right. And it works the other way around. This is actually a really common procedure to solve for these van or to experimentally determine these van der Waals coefficients um, by looking at the points that gases liquefy. We can get these van der Waals coefficients. OK, cool. So now that we have this. Right. So, in fact, let me write that. You know, this also means that B uh, would be equal to one third V bar C. Right. So if you wanted to solve for the van der Waals coefficient B, you could get the critical uh, molar volume uh, experimentally and use that to get the van der Waals coefficient experimentally. OK, cool. So now uh, what I want to do here is substitute this 3B um, back into uh, one of our expressions to solve for TC. All right. So I'm going to do that on a different slide. Right. OK, so let's go back to that first derivative expression. So we had that the derivative of pressure with respect to VC is going to be equal to, right, we had, we know it's going to be equal to zero, right? 
And that gave us that 2a over v bar c to the third was equal to RTC over V bar C minus B squared, right? So kind of going back to um, our initial work, right? This is basically this expression here. So I'm just taking that expression from the first derivative, right? So um, what we can do here is to substitute um, 3B in for VC. Right, since we have that uh, relationship, right? So we have 2a, it's going to be equal to 3b cubed RTC over 3b minus b squared, right? All I've done here is just substitute in the fact that we know that vc is going to be equal to 3b, right? We just solved for that. So in this expression, if you isolate TC, then you end up with the final expression of 8A over 27RB, right? This gives you your critical temperature in terms of your van der Waals coefficients, right? And now that, you, now that you're armed with both of these, right? So we have both of these expressions. What we can do is take the t uh, expression that we have for TC and for VC to solve for our critical pressure as well. Let me use a different color here. So for PC, right, we know that just from the Van der Waals equation, right, we'll have RTC over V bar C minus B uh, minus A over V bar C squared, right? Now that we have an expression for TC and for V bar C, all we have to do is plug those in in order to solve for PC, right? So if you plug both of those in, so you plug this expression in for TC and you plug in 3B for VC, then you get the final expression for the critical pressure of A over 27B squared, right? So what this gives us, this gives us a value for the critical pressure for the critical temperature and for the critical volume, all in terms of our van der Waals uh, coefficients, right? So this is going to be very powerful for us, right? Like I said, it's powerful in two respects. In one respect, if you know that a gas follows the van der Waals equation of state, then you know at which point it's likely to liquefy. And from the opposite perspective, looking at it experimentally, right? You can develop, um, you can actually solve for these van der Waals coefficients and fit it to experimental data, right? Based on where the gas liquefies. So it kind of shows how important these critical uh, constants for gases are and what we can use them for.